Welcome to today's 3D print. Sadly, no stream today. I have no internet at the house again. I believe it's that box right on the corner of my driveway that is bad again. And of course, I'm the end of the line for customers here, so it only affects me. <laughs> they told me no truck today. They see if we get anything tomorrow. So all I have is a cellular connection, which is insufficient for a stream. So today we're going to do a little Tinkercad tips and tricks thing. Um, I just saw somebody post onto the the new group on facebook they're having a problem printing a light switch that's because they're trying to print in midair and i'm going to show you what they're doing and i'm going to show you how to fix it so stay tuned <music> So the person has this here, a light switch, a Jedi Sith light switch. So I like that dark side. I, okay, I get that. It's funny. Um, anyway, as you can see, when you print it right side up, it looks great, except for this part here. This part here doesn't print very well. And that's because you're printing in midair, which you know you can't do. If you were to try to take a Lego and try to print that Lego in midair, what would happen? The Lego would just fall. So we have to give it some support. The problem is that's a lot of support. Now, in theory, you only need support around this hole in the middle. But let me show you a neat little trick you can use to print that. So if you want to print this, it is thing number 855401 on Thingiverse. And we're going to do this in Tinkercad. It's a very, very easy process. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to rotate this 180 degrees. What we're going to do is we're going to close this hole. We're going to fill this hole in. But we're only going to fill it in for one layer. The idea is to turn this into a bridging problem instead of a mid-air printing problem because bridging is a lot easier to deal with. Um, you have what's called a work plane. So you grab this work plane tool and just put it right here on top next to the opening. Now that opening is your work plane. We're just going to grab a box and we're going to put a box over top of the opening and make it big enough to cover that opening. Now, in Tinkercad, when you are messing with the box, you have this one arrow here, which is your Z-axis. See how that changes? Oh, I, I'm sorry, wrong box. I'm sorry, the, the yeah, arrow that moves your Z, right below it, you have the little um, the dot. So you have your four dots on the corner, your grab corners. You have your mid-plane corners, and then you have this one in the middle here. That is for your up and down, your Z. So it makes your box taller or shorter. What we're going to do is we're going to invert the box. We're going to go down until we go, boop, and now we're going the other way. So as you can see, the box now sticks out the other way. We're going to come here, and we're going to grab that box again. You see it's 10 millimeters tall, but in the negative direction. But well, we're going to change that to 0.2. So now we have, or whatever layer height. So if you're going to print this at 0 0.1, make this 0 0.1, although 0 0.2 would probably work better. If you're going to print at 0 0.24, then you need to make this 0 0.24. You see, I just made it 0 0.2. That's it. We're done. All we're going to do now is merge these two together. I'm going to make them the same color so it stays the same color. So now we're going to grab these two and we're going to merge them. Come on. Merge. There we go. Now we have the hole filled in, but the fill is only 0.2 millimeters thick. What that's going to do is that's going to let us bridge instead of fill or um, mid-air print. We rotate that around. We save it, export it out. STL. Let's hope this doesn't crash. And I think it just crashed. Yep, it crashed. Yeah, Firefox sucks. Let it reload. Come on. This will work for anything where it's compatible with bridging. If it's not compatible with bridging, this is not going to work. Seriously, you're going to double crash me? Oh, it crashed again. I might not be able to download this from Firefox. I might have to jump over to Chrome. I'll try it one more time. And then I'll have to pause you guys and I'll switch over to Chrome. The latest version of Firefox is whatever reason buggy. I don't know why. And 
and it crashed again. All right, you guys are going to have to wait a moment while I go and fix this. All righty, here we go. I've brought it, I've downloaded it with Chrome, and I brought it into my slicer. And as you can see, that hole is now filled in, but it's only 0.2 millimeter thick. So it's very easy to carve that out with a hobby knife. You literally just take your, your little knife like this, and just put it in the hole and go ch -ch -ch -ch, and you'll carve that plastic right out of there no problem it won't even be solidly attached because the bridge will be a little loose so when we slice this you can see it's filled in but it's only filled in one layer let's get down to that layer zoom in there it is so you can see now it's a clean bridge you're doing your fill and boom clean bridge all the way across then it starts building the hole and that's what you want, because when you try to print this hole in midair, it's not going to work. But if you do a bridge all the way across, it'll work just fine. It won't be a problem. And then when it goes to print the hole, it'll have this clean bridge here to print that hole on top of. And your print will come out almost perfect every single time. And then all you have to do is take your hobby knife, cut out that little tiny layer because it's only 0.2 millimeters thick. You can just take your hobby knife and cut out that layer and you'll be fine. And that will save you a tremendous amount of time because you don't have to print support. Because <laughs> if it's slightly droopy, it's no big deal because that's going to be on the inside of the, you know, the wall where you're not going to see it. And that will give you a nice clean print. So... There you go. Super simple solution to... A common problem people are going to run into. Um, it's not super common. It is a niche solution. So your problem needs to be solvable by that small niche solution. But um, if it is solvable, by, if a bridge would fix the problem, that's how you do it. Very simple to do. If you have a simple shape like this that you can bring into Tinkercad, you can do it in Tinkercad. Like I said, you just put the flip it upside down, put the work plane where you need it, drop a box, invert the box, Make the box 0.2 millimeters thick, or if thicker, if your layer height's thicker. So if you're printing at 0.24 millimeter, then you need to make it 0.24. If you're printing at 0.6 millimeter layer height, you need to make it a 0.6 millimeter layer. Um, although maybe you want a different solution if you're printing that thick. Um, you'll have to decide based on what you're printing. Uh, but there you go. That's an easy way to, for example, take care of a light switch and make that print very cleanly without an issue and give you a nice print. If you have any questions, ask down below. I will do my best to answer them. That's it. You guys have a great day. I will see you next week. Alrighty, little bonus footage for you today. I want to show you some stuff I have going on outside. So stay tuned. First, we got my kitty. He loves the perch. They both love this perch. Sometimes they'll sleep up here together. He's such a good cat. Yeah, it's one of their favorite spots to sleep. He'll just sleep here all day. He's such a good boy. He's such a good boy. Yeah. I got a door for the container in the back. And I finally found somebody, hopefully, who will help me get this door installed. Because I need to put a hole in the Connex container. So let me go show you a little bit of that. I got the Kia. I'm getting rid of the minivan. I'm going to sell the minivan. This is something that's quite a bit newer. Salvage titles are pretty easy here in New Mexico. So this is a salvage title car. It was a theft recovery um, The only thing wrong with it was a couple of little broken things from the theft and they fixed that for me. No problem And otherwise I have a 2017 Kia Soul with 70,000 miles on it. My objective was five years or less. This is four years old 80,000 miles or less. This is 70,000 miles. I could have got a 2018 with 40,000 miles but I'd rather have the green instead of the boring white and this has got the plus package. So backup camera, better audio, all that stuff, nicer wheels. So not bad. Even around here, it gets a pretty respectable 25, 30 miles per gallon. It's got a shocking amount of room inside. It's way roomier inside than you'd think. And under here, I got the couch from my little drive-in theater trailer I'm working on. But hopefully this is a vehicle that I won't have to mess with for the next 10 or 15 years because I only use this when I can't use the electric car. So hopefully that'll hold up. Got an enormous table for the the container. This will actually get the whole width of the container will go on one, one end. It's all made of plywood, the whole thing. That was pretty neat, but hey, it's a giant 4x8 foot table. And then I also scored this. An enclosed trailer. Oh yeah. 
getting one of these for an affordable price is like unheard of. Got this for 800 bucks with title. A lot of the times these things don't have title. But yeah, you can't really see that. There we go. Nice enclosed trailer for 800 bucks. And then the real score a couple days ago, 300 bucks. I got a whole trailer full, 10. Nice, tall, five layer metal shelving. This is actually a big deal because that's enough shelving to go almost the entire length of a container. So that gives me a ridiculous amount of shelving space that I desperately need. So we had it wrapped up a little bit to make sure the wind didn't get inside here and lift off these panels because as you can see, they're not really attached. They just sit on these little hooks. But these are nice heavy duty metal shelves. There's 10 of them there. So I'll have plenty of shelving space. Gotta figure out what's wrong with this. It was overheating coming back. And it shouldn't be overheating. Oh, that tire's low. Gotta put air in that tire. But this was overheating, so I gotta figure out why. But here you go. Another nice reason to have a trailer like this handy. So, gotta fix the tire on this too. You can see the tire's going flat. I'm gonna have to air it up and actually drive this to a local place, get that tire fixed. But there you go, lots and lots of The idea is, the guy said he has the tools to help me do it, he's gonna do a trade. You know, I have a lot of those solar lights, you know, the nice street light like solar lights, you know, the big ones. So in exchange for one of those solar, it's worth about 200 bucks. In exchange for one of the solar lights, he's going to help me put a hole in the container and mount that door in the container. So I won't have to come to the end of the container here and work my way down the length of the container to get in and out of the container, put stuff in there, use the space. Um, I'll be able to actually walk right out underneath the carport, right into a door. It'll be a 42 inch door. So no problem getting things like that table inside there or these shelves inside there. So that's gonna make things a lot better. Um, I would still like to eventually get these moved a little bit. I mean, I have all this space. I'd like to try to make um, a room here. As you can see, this space here is very constricted from the container to the fence line. So I'd like to open this space up a little bit so I can drive back here and turn around. But um, that's it. A little sneak peek update what's going on. I will be back next Wednesday. Ooh, flowers. Cool. I gotta encourage more flower growth around here.